Hello and welcome to the Donna's Advice and Stories. I'm your host, Donna Guerreros, and I have a very, very special episode of the podcast. I am going to have her introduce herself, an amazing, talented woman who I was so lucky to cross paths with a few years ago on the West Coast. I want you to meet Roma. Thank you so much for coming on. How Thank are you? Thank you for having me. Dee, I, I'm so excited to do this. I'm so excited and, to have um, you here. Yeah, no, it's my honor, honestly. Like, I love what you're doing. And so my name is Roma Oshowo. I am a contemporary abstract artist. I live in Dallas, Texas, and I paint work that evokes joy. That's that's my, my sole purpose. Um, work that just inspires people to remember who they are, whose they are, where they are, who they belong to, where they're going, and just have hope. Um, what else? I'm originally from the British Virgin Islands. Yes, which we are going to talk um, about. We're going to talk yeah, about her story yeah, yeah. and how she got here and yes. how, how she got here as in not just the United States, but how she got here to this <laughs> point in her life, which is insanely this, this journey. I mean, you are such an inspiring woman. You are so sweet. You are so sweet. Thank you. Um, and I, you know, I've lived in so many different states, um, but we're in Dallas, Texas now. And um, you can find my work on Instagram at Roma.artist. Um, on Facebook, it's Roma Oshowo Studio. Um, my website is RomaOshowo.com. And that's Could you spell that for them? Yeah, Roma, R O M A O S O W O.com. Excellent. So yeah. let's just get to it. Let's talk about this journey. How did we become sure. an artist? How did we, how are we out here with enough confidence to, you know, have our that, paintings I up know. on Instagram <laughs> and the world and, uh, you know, not caring what people think. And, you know, I, I saw a meme this morning where it's like, go ahead and be cringe. If you think you're, if you mm -hmm. think they're going to think you're cringe, go and start mm -hmm. that business, go and do this. And yeah. also you taught yourself how to paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with the help of a lot of classes and courses, but for sure. Um, but this so isn't what I, you studied. You yeah, didn't go no, to no, art I, school. No, no, I, no, I did not I, like, you know, formally study art at all. Um, I actually, as a child, I was like super crafty. And thankfully, my mom would always kind of let me follow through with my harebrained ideas of like, I want to do this, I want to do that. So all my creative outlets that I had to get out of me as a kid, she let me do. Um, but usually on Saturdays, I would be like crafty, like painting, you know, but you know, in the islands, my inspiration was my surroundings. So it was mostly like mountains and ocean and coconut trees. That's what I used to paint. And um, so I painted up through college, you know, just a, I dabbled a little bit in college, but I was too busy to kind of really keep it going. And um and then after that, there was like a super long hiatus. I met my husband and shortly after I met my husband, we moved to New York and life changed. Right. So when I met my husband, I was the marketing yeah, let's manager. Talk, let, let's yeah, talk yeah. about you. OK, yes, let's talk about yes. this life that she she you really had to make hard decisions. Yeah. And that's why yeah. I love so your story we, because it all, yeah. you had the faith, man. You had the blind faith. And a lot of times I call on you in my head where I'm like, Aww. Donna, it's gonna work out. It's yes. gonna, what's meant for you yes. is meant. So please tell yes. people you're, you know, sure. didn't study so art. Even, Let's do it. So I didn't study art because even though, um, actually like a couple years ago, Donna, like a friend of mine messaged me and said, do you remember when we were 11, you told me you were going to be an artist when you grew up? And I'm like, I did. And she's like, yes. And you were so short. I could not, I don't remember that. And she's like, wow. yes, Roma, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, it's funny how your, your yearnings as a child, you know, sometimes we table, we put them on the back burner because life gets in the way. And that's mm -hmm. exactly my story. I feel like at a certain point, I started to feel like that's not realistic. Right. So what's my real job going to be? Um, so what my soul really was drawn to, I kind of like, that's not real life. Right. So mm -hmm. what are you really going to do? And as this creative person, I couldn't figure it out. I was the most, con I used to 
listen to people who would say, I know I'm, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer. And I, would be, I would just be so annoyed that they knew what they wanted to do. Cause I was, same, I was same. struggling. Yeah. Same. I was like, still at 40. I'm do. pissed off at 40. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. God damn it. I wish I knew. <laughs> Good for you. Um, and so, yeah, I studied marketing because I felt like, well, you know, I could kind of plug myself into so many different industries. Um, and it's a creative outlet, right? Like you, same. You get I study marketing too. I study wow. marketing too for the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, you get to be creative, but you make money. Yes, exactly. That was exactly my reasoning. Not because I was like so drawn to marketing. And so I studied marketing and I went back home to the British Virgin Islands. I initially started off, um, um, as the personal assistant to the deputy governor, I was filling in because his assistant was on maternity leave. So they put me there, which was a, a, a pretty important job. And, um, it, but it was short term. And then the position came up to be the marketing manager over the postal service. And for so the whole I country, took, for the whole country. Yes. And so it was amazing because I went, there was never that position there before. So I got to like overhaul how they looked, you know, customer service, all this great stuff. The logo, if you Google the logo, I created that. Their uniforms, we, we redesigned everything. Um, I helped study for, you know, creating a postal code for, for goodness sake. So the- And the, how old were you at this point? I was 21. Wow. Crazy. I know. I know. So my bosses were the postmaster general and the deputy postmaster general. And then there was me and what was crazy. So, and it was amazing. You know, we did customer service training. It was like, you know, they had new uniforms, all this great stuff was happening. Um, so some time passed and lo and behold, the postmaster general and the deputy postmaster general were both retiring within a short span of time <laughs> from each other. And I, I am guessing one or both of them suggested like she can handle it. Right. So I was told that I was airmarked for the position of postmaster general, which would have made me the youngest in the, in, in the hemisphere. Like it, it was insane. Wow. And, um, it, you know, of course it's exciting. And it's like, what do you do? Because by that time in our lives, I knew my husband was applying to go do his residency um, in the U.S. Um, so, and smitten in love with this man, soulmates, yeah, and, and like, newlyweds, newlyweds. Yes. So it's like, how do you? You know, what's funny? My mom was like, "Well, you could just do it for a year, so you'll have it on your resume, and just you know, you guys can live apart. You make you make the money, and you can visit it." And I'm like, "Mom, no, like that's that would not be good for a, for a new marriage." Right. And, at the, and at this point, um, you know, and if people don't know, like with med school and residency and all that, you're not really making any money. So you're like, oh, no, the bread, no, no. you're also no. the breadwinner right now. Yeah. He, he, he would have been going from actually making money because he, he worked in the ER in the British system. You, you can actually work after medical school before, you know, specializing or doing a consultancy. So he, um, he was making pretty good money knowing he had, it's like going backwards a bit, right? Like, whoa, let me go back so I can get further along. And, um, so knowing we were going to be like broke. Okay. So leaving that behind, I, I knew, oh, like broken, oh. like nobody. Cause if you were the postmaster general, you have a life, Listen, you're government you, official. People know, people know who you are and all yeah. this great stuff. And then that was literally my life. I went from a small place where people did know who I was because I was like, a lot of people did. I was, I did all these crazy things. Like I was a DJ. Um, I, I worked at the TV station, like bringing, um, like social news and stuff. And, uh, I played in a, in a Calypso band. So there are a lot of people I played in a, in a steel drum band people, a lot of people knew who I was. So when you move from a small place and then you come to the U S and you're an immigrant, nobody knows who you are besides a couple people, you know, here and there, right? Nobody cares about what you did who you were, what you almost did, uh -huh. you know? And so it was like going to point zero, um, after from a young age, having accomplished so much, it was like, nobody cares. And, um, yeah. So I, like, I, I, I mean, my husband got into residency. We were in Rochester, New York, and we were broke. 
okay? Because he was on a stipend. They don't even call it a salary. A salary. Okay? It's like stipend. This is this should hold you, <laughs> you know, make it work. And um, of course, he was supporting his family, um, his parents, you know, back home. And so it, it was like a lot um, for us. One car, um, one cell phone. Back then it was like uh, pagers before we even got us. It was like pagers were still like a thing. And I remember us having one car and he would he would have to go to work at like six something in the morning and two thirty in the morning. There was a couple of times like I have to pick him up at two thirty and he's going back at six. I'm like, um, I'm dead. This is just insane because his life as a first year resident was insane. It's you awful. Notice. It's oh, God. It's and awful. Um, yeah. And so. Eventually, you know, I and a lot of marriages, to- a lot of marriages, sorry to cut you up, but a lot of marriages don't make residency. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a hard time you, in a marriage. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, and the, and, the, and then the hard part is on the outside, people just see you as like, you're a doctor. What's the problem? They don't right. understand. A lot of people don't understand like that dynamic of like, no, I'm broke. You know, right. I'm like really, really broke. <laughs> and so, I mean, we had literally, of course, you know, I shared with you, my mom is like a successful entrepreneur. I could have called mm-hmm. my mom. And just be like, can you just help us? But there's a certain pride you have of like, we're doing this on our own, right? Yeah. And so- uh, Pride there, has I, been my biggest downfall in life. Yes, yes, <laughs> pride has yeah. been a real cross I've had to bear. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you're just like, okay, we can make it work. And so I worked a bit and and I did. I, and then eventually got into marketing. Um, and then when my son was born in um, November, 2005, um, so we had been there by then like a year and a couple months. I was working as like a marketing assistant. Really, I was a marketing manager, but I didn't have the title. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, yeah. We, we <laughs> um, know you love titles. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't have the title because I mean, the, I, I would come up with all the great ideas, but get no credit. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, but my son was six months old and I just had this like huge desire to be home with him and I'm like but we can't afford it right because we need my income too right but um you know I spoke to my husband and we're like let's 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 just make it work so I was a stay-at-home mom from the time my son was six months old and he is 16 now and I've been home ever since um wow so I was a stay-at-home mom and I still kind of did some small business consulting from home. I did what I could and I dabbled into like things that I could do from home to keep myself busy. Um, But, you know, from a stay at home mom, I transitioned into being a homeschool mom. I don't know if I was homeschooling when I met you. I don't know. I think I probably was, was on the the tail end of end of it. Maybe. Yeah. 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 So from a stay at home mom um, and then, at, in the last three years, I was a, a homeschool mom to my both my kids. So it was a it was a fascinating journey that kind of got me here. All along that, like during that time, the like I I didn't remember art. That's the crazy thing. I forgot my soul almost like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like I had detached from what brought me the most joy to survive. Because when you leave comfort and you come to the u.s as an immigrant and your main focus is to survive you're not thinking about the luxuries of things that maybe you had you you once had you're just like you're in survival mode like you know what are we gonna like do we have enough money to for this month you know like okay we we can't pay this bill let's play that bill you know what i mean like that that serious so yeah so i don't know that sort of like gives brings you up to speed on before I got into art, but that kind of, that time period when I was a a homeschool mom on the tail end, um, that entire period, I should say, I knew there was something I was supposed to be doing. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's like something burning inside of you. Yeah. I know the feeling. And you just want to scratch it it or like wipe the dust or, and, 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 I would get down like on my knees and I remember Mm -hmm. being in a church in Puerto Rico with my Mm -hmm. friends and we went to this church in Puerto Rico and I was just on my knees in this church and I, I said, can you just tell me 
what yeah. I'm supposed to be doing. Like, just yeah. tell me. Yeah. And at one point I was, and, I, and I'm very connected to my grandfather who's passed on and yeah. I talk to him and I have a very good relationship with him, even though, you know, like I remember his, you know, it's, it's we have a good relationship, even though he's mm-hmm. not here. And mm-hmm. I, at one point I remember saying to someone, if my grandfather would just appear at the foot of my bed and be like, Donna, this is what you're supposed to do. I go, I wouldn't even be scared because I would just be so happy that I finally had the answer, you know, but you feel it like gnawing at you and you just want to know what it is. Yeah. It's, it's almost painful because it's like, you're trying to give birth, but you like, I don't even know what this is. Is is there even something in there? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is this? And, um, for me, you know, I, this is a part of what I, the part that I share often, it was a, over a 10 year period that I literally prayed alongside my husband almost every single night. Um, this same prayer, like, Lord, would you reveal her purpose? My sweet husband would be like, Lord, it's like, please, can you just help her? Can you please just help this girl out? out? Cause she's, yeah, <laughs> she's killing me. But he, he was so faithful with, with it, you know, Lord, just show me what you would have me to do. Like, because I knew it. I knew like, this is not it. Like, this is not the end. I know there's something I'm called to do and I, I need to figure it out. And for me, I, um, I had went to like a church service. This was this set, like, I think it was November, 2016. And in this church service, it was like this young pastor. And he said something like the other side of your, your prayer sometimes is being blocked because of your lack of obedience. And I'm like, Huh? Like, okay, I, I got a block prayer. So what, what does this mean for <laughs> right. me? This is me. Like, right. so you ever got your hair. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, and I'm thinking, okay, what am I not being obedient with? And he's like, sometimes we need to let go of some of the things that are holding us back. And I had some habits back then that I'm like, okay, I could let go of like, I'm watching this crap over here. Like, this is probably not helping me. Like, I need clarity of mind, you know? And so I started making a list and I started like really letting go of like, what is not serving me? What is not honoring God in my life right now? Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. So that was this, that was November 20. And if, if you, do, if you don't mind sharing, like what were some of those things? Obviously distractions, right? Television, consuming yes. your time, some, like some that TV kind of stuff. Shows. Yeah, ex- exactly those things. Like just like I'm a big, huge TV person, right? Mm-hmm. Like my hus- poor husband, he's like, do we have to have the TV in the room? Yes, that's me. Um, so it's usually like, but was it like people, a, like people, things like, like what, like what, like what more habits? Like, like what do you think? Like, it, it was like some bad habits. Mm-hmm. It was like some really bad habits. Um, I, let me see. Um, I think for me too, like I just internally, there were things that I, I used to like, if somebody hurt my feelings, I would like cut them off. Like you're done where you're dead to me. Like that was, that was, that was one of my biggest, like, like you're like, the real, you're the real surgeon. You're the real surgeon um, in the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I was a gangster <laughs> in that way. Like, um, you what, you know, forget you're you. Done. I was re- you're I'm, finished. Like, no, like, you know, like it's over. And, um, I was not big on forgiveness and just grace. And so, and my husband would be like, you don't have to cut them off because of this. And I'm like, yes, I do. They hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. They crossed me. You don't cross me. <laughs> and so that was a big one of like, I, I really need to work on some of these things on myself. So it was yeah. a combination of letting go of like things I was watching, um, my be- own personal behaviors, just trying yeah. to really, I'm putting more thought into it. Cause sometimes I think we ignore, we ignore, we know that we're doing that's not serving us but we kind of just brush them off as like and we say oh I'm just, it's just my habit or oh, I've been doing that right so long. I'm just like or, this yeah this is just how I am right um and so it was really having an awareness of no like I'm gonna work on being a better person and so yeah, sometimes it's like we talk about energy like I talk about energy a lot and you know like I operate in that space and mm-hmm. like sometimes like you're saying you being upset with someone and like cutting them off even though yeah. you've cut them off, you're holding yeah. this energy still between the two of you, of you being yes. mad. And that yeah. person's like living their life. Yeah. And the only person that's holding back is you. It's me. Yeah. Because you're thinking so, about it and it's like clogging your brain and your, yes. your daily, you know? Yes. I used like to you, do that a lot too. Yeah. You're giving them too much uh, energy, too much power because yeah. if they're even like 
getting you to the point where you cut them off. You know what I mean? You can like, you can restructure, you know, how that relationship exists, but mm -hmm. you don't have to like go to the extreme of like, you're dead to me. That was me literally. Like I, that was the worst. Okay. So, um, I, I did all of that. And, um, it's funny how it's all connected back to my husband, which is like, when you have somebody that's in your corner, um, I think they play a, just like in his career, I played a huge role with some mm -hmm. crazy things that happened. That you did. Um, you really did. That I was connected to. Um, but, and, and likewise with me, you know, one day it was December. So now just maybe a month later, he comes home from work and he, he goes like, you don't do anything for yourself. You know, you're always taking care of everybody else. What do you do for yourself? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't watch TV, you know. I do things. <laughs> and I and do he's stuff. like, well, you used to paint when I met you. Why did you stop? And I'm like, well, I stopped, I think, because we were broke when we moved to the U.S. You know, like paint was like, who has money for like paint? We were just trying to survive. And then so much time had passed between that, that I didn't even go back to it. Like it was almost like this breakup, right? Mm -hmm. That I just let go. Um, it was on a back burner. And so, yeah, and I went and I went out and I bought like a watercolor set and it was horrible. Everything I made was like, oh, this is terrible. But it was this feeling of finding yourself, right? Like, oh, I used to love this. Why did I stop? And so from there, it like got into like acrylics and then I bought all the different accessories, you know, like just the different tools and, and about two weeks after this, I, of course, every free moment, I'm like painting just some little, it all looked terrible, okay? It was horrible. Um, but I was painting as much as I can. And every, every night, my husband would come home. I moved out into the garage. I set up this space like, okay, it's messy. Let me come out here. So two weeks later, he comes home, gets out of the car, and he just looks over what I'm doing. It's ugly. I promise you. It's terrible. And he goes, I don't care what you need to do, what amount it takes. Like, this is what you're supposed to do. So whatever you want to do, you want to go to class, you want to go to school, what you, like, what do you need to do to facilitate this? This is what you're supposed to do. That was like mind blowing to me because I didn't see it in that way at that time. One. Mm -hmm. And then two, you have to remember, we're coming from cultures where being a professional artist is not really a thing. A thing, right? right? Like a I, I mean, I deal like, with that. I deal with that in my own marriage because my husband's a stand-up comedian and, and yes. his family cannot grasp like what he yes. even does. And it's, it's yes. like, you went to school, you went to college. What is this? What is, <laughs> it's like, you can't, hold, you can't hold it in your hands, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what is the real job here? You know? <laughs> right. And so... And, and just coming from my husband, I'm like, wow, like I was surprised. And he's like, this is what you're supposed to do. I feel it so strongly. And you have to understand along this path of trying to figure out, Lord, show me what it is you would have me to do. I tried quite a few things. I, I mean, at one point I love jewelry and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm starting a jewelry business. I had a wholesale. I had a website. I had gone to market. Like it was insane. I went to New York to this like market thing. And wow. I had already like d done all the paperwork officially, you know, and one day my husband comes home. I'm deep into like, I have merchandise. Okay, D, I have, I'm ready to go. My husband comes home and he's like, I don't want you to be upset with me, but this is not what you're supposed to, <laughs> this is not what you're supposed to be doing. I'm like, can you talk, can you tell me this like months ago? Um, yeah. And I was like all into it. And then I eventually, after being pissed for a while, I realized, you know, he's right. Just because you like something doesn't mean that's your calling. It doesn't oh, mean that's you, your purpose. What are you taking me to church today? What are you, like, you're the yes. pastor today that I'm listening to yes. right now because yes. it's true. Yes. I mean, do yes. we not know Donna's adventures in t-shirts? I mean, it, my husband was <laughs> like, I let you, he's like, I let you sit back and do this t-shirt thing. And I didn't say anything, but the whole time I'm like, I don't know, D. Oh, and he's like, yeah. but he's like, it's but knowing my personality, he's like, I, I knew I had to just let you move through it. Because yes. I, he's like, knowing you, he's like, you go through things to learn something. So if I would have never done the t-shirts, I would have never learned yes. e-commerce. I would have never yes. learned, you know, the, the specific things. I would have never learned collaborating with other people. I would have never learned about uh, getting sure. my LLC. So it's like, 
everything happened for a reason and I had to do t-shirt, but, but he's like the whole time you're, you're, you're like wanting to do t-shirts. I'm like, she's not a, she's not a t-shirt company, but I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. It's not, it's not hurting her. It's not hurting her right now. So that's kind of like our rules with one another. It's like, unless the person is in danger (laughs) or looking like a total fool, we don't usually step in. (laughs) You know, it's like having right, a kid, right, right. like you right, let them exactly. play close to the stove, but when get they get dirty. too close, get back yeah, here. Yeah. You pull you them know? back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So with him sort of being this voice of reason of like, I, this is not it. I, I just, I know this is not it. And I heard that a few times along the way for him to be like, this is it. I'm like, this is it. Like, this is, this is it. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I do this? Have you seen what I'm making? It's terrible. And um, and so just a, just having a little bit of belief in yourself is really all it takes in the beginning. You don't need to be like, you know, walking on water or anything. You just need to right. be like, I'm capable. I know I can get better. You you don't have to see the end. You just have to see your your po- the possibility of what could be. Like, I can get better. I I know I can get better. And that's why I leave a lot of my early art up. Like you can go back and see some of that interesting stuff in the beginning. Cause I want yeah. people to see my evolution. Same and thing so, with me. And uh, that's with yeah, the podcast. Like yeah. some of these early podcast episodes, I'm like, what was I doing? Same thing with my YouTube. <laughs> I have some YouTube videos and now I'm like, leave them up because people need to see yes. if I'm really going to call myself an artist, which I, at the end of the day, that is what I am deduce. I'm, a, I'm an artist. So if I'm going to call myself yes. an artist, you need to see my evolution. Cause that's the only, yeah. like, that's how you get inspired. Like you look at Picasso's yes. early stuff. You look at, you yes. know, these people who, who people int- to understand. Cause Especially in the art world, I think sometimes people are intimidated and they feel like um, you're born with this like incredible gift. I think we're all born with some creative um, nature, you know, and how you nurture it is really the difference. Yes. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't, I could never do what you're doing. Yes, you can. I, 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 right. don't, I don't fall into that category of people who think it's for a select few. I think the opportunity is there. If you can hold a pencil and a paintbrush, there's opportunity. You can, you can, you can develop those skills. You can learn. Um, and so I think if that's really your path and you put the work in, the opportunity is there and, for you. And that's the key, putting the – because uh, ex- like what we were talking before when we, when we were um, kind of offline before, the funny thing mm-hmm. is too, like a lot of people will reach out to me and they're like, oh, you, you can do – you do it all. First off, I don't do it all. Like Instagram right. is the curated best, and a lot of times I even yes. share the uncurated best of my life. But sure. Sure. The, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, you're crushing it. You work at the hospital. You, you have this business, yeah. you have this community, you have this. And it's like, yes, I do have these things. Yes. Oh, I yeah. wish I could do something like this. The first thing I'll say is what time do you wake up? Mm. I wake up at four 30 in the morning. Okay. Yes. Yes. Like if you are, you can't be waking up at nine 30. Okay. Start in your day. Okay. That's like a- I have a whole, whole day before the day even starts. I emailed my tech guy at 5 a.m. It was 5 a.m. I believe it. And he, yeah. And so I'm, I'm thankfully, you know, my husband is like up at four o'clock almost pretty much every day. And so that's like my, I, I try to hang on a little bit once he gets up, but that's mm-hmm. not, not m- much further. I'm, I'm up not much longer after that. I'm, and and you have to like up. learn and, and- And you have to learn yourself, right? Because like I, I, on my, so I wake up at 4.30 in the morning on the days that I work at the hospital. And then Mm -hmm. the days that I'm off, I'll wake up. I try to wake up by like six or seven. But the thing is that like, there are some days I will continue to wake up at 4.30 in the morning, but you got to learn. Are you a morning worker? Are you an evening worker? I know personally, I crap out by two, three o'clock. So if it's something important that needs all my attention, it has to happen before three. I can do like, I call it like laundry, laundry work where you're like, it's folding laundry where you really don't need all the brain cells. I can, yeah. you got to learn these things about yourself and you got to sit with yourself. And you also have to be able to say, like you said, come to these bad like things about you. Like I know yeah. like my attention span is gone after three o'clock. Yeah. I also well, know I have to work to be, early. I used to be a, a, like a night owl and me too. It's and it switched flipped. at some point. Yeah. Me too. It completely flipped. Um, where I, I am, I hate waking up early. So it's not something I, I, I love it. The longest, I give myself extra time to get up because it's that hard. Oh, me right? too. I, and I'm so but, cranky. I'm such a, I like, I need a good hour. I see the difference in my day 
when I started earlier. There was a huge difference in my productivity, in my yep. attitude, in just how graceful I am towards people. So mm -hmm. I know if I can get up, I can do my prayer and I, I can fit in all those things that are important, you know, before I sort of even like face my kids and, you know, do my workout, all this great stuff. I'm a better person once I, yep. once I, I'm moving. Right. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of work in what I do because, you know, again, we talked about Instagram, the, you know, the glamorous appearing posts. But behind those, there's so much hard work. There's so much rejection. There's so much failure um, that it's hard to, I try to talk about it, you know, like I got rejected for this <laughs> and it sucked and I'm upset. You know, I, I try to share those things because I, I want people to know that it's okay. This is how I work through it. I have to tell myself these things, you know, like that's okay. That's just one person's opinion. Who cares? Um, and that wasn't meant for me what what's right. not for you is not for you right so don't force it what is for you is for you and nobody can get in the way of that because if god predestines something for you it doesn't matter if like cows start flying around you it's still gonna happen right, right. so yeah so there's a lot of hard work behind it but it's been such a beautiful journey and a blessing to to be able to really just walk in something like i can wake up at two o'clock in the morning and be like excited like i gotta write this down i gotta do this right or just be just always on all it's hard to turn it off because it just is such a part of me and you live it i mean it's it's because you're 100 percent living in your authenticity and doing you and you, yes. you took the, so you took classes. I know from your story that you told me that you took classes, you took like online classes, you joined groups, you, you really I taught yourself how classes. to get better. And this is the thing. Um, a lot of times with, you know, I think I'm never feeling like I've arrived. I am at any given time, D, I'm always registered within two classes. I'm in two classes right now. One is a wow. major course. Um, that I've retaken like three years as an alumni because it's that good. But my, my point is I'm never feeling like, oh, I'm great. Like I'm done. Let me just make my work now. I always feel like there's more to learn, especially in art. Like there, they, nobody has arrived, right? I can always get a different perspective or see something a different way or learn, or you come back to some information and it's completely different from a different perspective a year later. Well, because you've grown um, because, and your, persp your perspective has shifted and you've changed absolutely, as a person. Absolutely. So I think always being willing, and, and I, it, it doesn't seem like a chore to me. I love, I'm obsessed with taking classes and learning. Me how, too. I love learning. You, I'm such this? a nerd. Yeah. I'm, I yes. love learning. I love taking classes. Yes. 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 So I, um, you know, started off just taking classes, this, that, and, and being a little bit unsure. And, and one thing that really stuck with me Actually, it was when we were at um, Alt Summit, and so that's Joanna where we Gaines met. Was like on stage, yeah. Joanna Gaines, my yeah. Joanna Gaines yes. and um, Garance. Do when I watched Garance Door, I like. I mean, you. I think you were there with me. I like fell apart yes. like when I watched her because I was like, <laughs> when she was like, I yes. was at the top of the fashion world, and I was like. I don't want to do this anymore. And she's like, there I was in a $10,000 gown laying on the floor of my hotel in Paris. And she's yeah. like, I don't want to do it. And she's like, my assistant was like, we, ha we have to be at Dior in 10 minutes. <laughs> what do you mean you don't want to do this anymore? And right. she's like, I just don't want to do this anymore. Don't. I don't want to be this person. And mm -hmm. that, so, so Roma and I met at something which we um, both attended and, and we had previously attended and then we ended up serendipitously, serendipitously meeting two total strangers yeah. at this conference called Alt Summit, which happened in Palm Springs. And it was right before the yeah. pandemic. And yeah. um, we both met there and we ended up just becoming friends. And how we ended up becoming friends was because I... The, I love doing Instagram stories and I know, I know I drive everybody <laughs> crazy and Roma was like watching me do these Instagram stories. And yeah. I was like, I, and I even apologized when we first met. I'm like, I'm such a, I know it's so annoying. I'm such a pain in the ass. And you're like, no, I love it. And then we just like all, we kind of became friends, went out to dinner and we had a really beautiful dinner, which at the, and I, just to, to not get too into it, but at the time in my life where I was, I needed this woman sitting across from me on the screen more Aww. than anybody knows. Aww. And there is no doubt in my mind when I say the universe, God put you on my path Aww. to 
to talk to me like I needed to be spoken to in that moment. And I, I thank you yeah. forever. And you, you are big, you are a bigger part of my journey than you will ever know. Oh, and though it was so short so and it was like a week in the week in the desert, yeah. you really, you really spoke to me how I needed to be spoken to. So thank oh, you. I appreciate it. This I'm is so like my, glad. my public. Thank you. Oh, I, I am so, so grateful sweet. for, for crossing paths with so you. I'm glad. I'm just so glad you just, you know, the, the New Yorker in me was drawn to you. You know, I lived in New York a couple of times and so I just loved you. I just love how cool and down to earth you were and just real, you know, I'm really drawn to that. So I and, and I, I love that. you and I, I love how grace, how you look at so, everything with grace and how Aww. you really, you really just, you made me just realize a, and it, you spoke to me. I, you just spoke to me how I need to be spoken to. I, that's that's oh. all I'm going to say. Because I, I, the funny that's thing is you That's all the world gonna, needs to know. The funny thing, people are going to hear this and think we were at dinner by ourselves, but we were, we, there was actually... We were the group <laughs> of people. Yeah, there were other yeah. people there. But we were like, listen. I'm like, we listen. were zoned in. And she was like, listen, yeah. bitch. She didn't say that. She would never say that. But she was like, listen. And she she really talked to me like you... She just talked to me and you spoke to my soul. And you did. Oh. And I thank you for I'm that. I'm so glad. Well, and I had nothing to do with business. Me. Yeah. It, I don't God, think, really, I think God you were, knew, he knew what you needed. He knew what your heart's desire was. And it was crazy how we met. And we, you know, there's so many people you could meet there. So many people would, yeah. were connecting. But we, we just ended up on li- in line next to each other. Exactly. And and this beautiful friendship, you know, you know, exists because of just that chance meeting, which I don't necessarily think it's chance. It's just it was supposed to be. And so yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to know you. I'm blessed to know you. Thank you. I really, you are, you, and in the, the last like four years, ju- I mean, your journey is huge, but in the last four years of me watching your journey, when I tell mm-hmm. you this woman I met at, at this little conference in the, in the desert was mm-hmm. talking to me about how, oh, I'm painting. I've learned how to paint. I've taught myself. I'm starting to sell my work. This mm-hmm. is how I've organically grown my Instagram. I started mm-hmm. in my mm-hmm. community. This is how mm-hmm. I try to be. I live in my authenticity. I know I'm not for everybody, you know, who comes across. Yeah. You take what you want. You leave what you don't. But right. I'm not going to bend who I am. Yeah. And you really go with your gut, just like you went Yo, with your gut. My, that is so Back in the Virgin me. Islands and said no to the Postal Service. Yeah. And came, so, like, you really go with it's, it. It's, it's, I mean... In one way, I feel like because I started late, you know, in my eyes, I always think I started late. You know, it was like I was 37. You know, there are people doing this in their 20s and out of art school. And um, story of my life, bene- starting yeah. late, starting late. Yeah. So you're starting late. But let me tell you something. God doesn't waste time. So what you think has been a waste, everything that led up to that point has been put to use. Every skill. You know, all that marketing stuff I had to practice and learn how, you know, everything I had, you know, getting my business, my, my businesses that never got off the ground really, you know, but knowing how to set those up, they came into play with my art business. So nothing is wasted when finally God gives you and, you know, reveals to you, like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You, you start to realize like, huh, the timing was perfect because my kids were older so right. there's so much more I can do. I have a lot of, you know, my kids are like watching me do this and they're excited. And like, literally, if you watch any of my reels, just know it's my 13 year old daughter that, that put it together. It's just crazy. She, she's a, she's a director. Started, like, yeah. She, she loves vide- videography and all that stuff. And she's like this, you know, she's saving for her like little software and that's what she's into. So no, she takes it seriously. She's like, nope, nope we need to edit no nope. and i'm like who's no, the boss here you, you weren't you weren't good at that we need to redo that i'm like, sorry you no. didn't bring it this time mom more energy <laughs> she's like she's like that's cringe you know don't no smile, no smile <laughs> i love cringe like, i love cringe <laughs> cringe is the best this is my new favorite word that's cringe yeah, yeah, yeah. you're cringe so she's, she's hysterical because i'm like oh, you're you're like just born two days ago like what do you know right Um, Right. But anyway, so yeah, it's funny how everything kind of comes together when it's meant to be. It's a beautiful sort of marriage of your excitement and your passion. And then God will use some of what you have already been through. The good, the bad, the ugly is going to come to serve you in that moment when you're like truly walking in what you're supposed to do. 
and in the last four years, you you sell your paintings. Um, obviously, um, you're in galleries. You're in yes, yeah. major major home goods stores, right? Yeah, you've had yeah, pieces have- in in stores. Yeah, you have a licensing deals. You have accessories. Yes. You yes. have greeting cards. <laughs> I mean, come on, what else we got? Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I some things I do on my own, and then some things I have licensing um, deals with. So, like I always tell people, like if the opportunity is not, and I and I will say this, I have never reached out to a company to say, "Hey, will you license my product?" All I do is just show up as myself, okay? And what I in the beginning, and I, and I always wanted to be licensed. Um, but I just didn't, I wasn't sure how to navigate that. So I was just like, okay, let me just start like doing some of this myself. And then in that way, you're showing, you're showing the world, like my, my work looks great on products. Right. So I did mm-hmm. that for myself first. Um, if, if you're not being invited to the table, make a table, right. Figure out how yeah. to like come up with your own thing in the beginning and you know, it, it'll work out eventually. But, um, yeah, so some things I ha- I have licensing for, some deals are long term, some deals are short term, and then other things like my crossbody bags. Have you ever seen those? Yes, um, I've seen them. They're back, yes, by the way, um, according yeah, to her they're, Instagram. They're, 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 coming, they're coming back. They're coming back. They're I saw the post. Back. They're coming back. But um, yeah, like those, I just lo- I just like putting my art on things that I am personally ups- like love. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's because usually um, what I've found is my demographic is kind of like me, my age or within that range and has my taste. And I like nice things. So if it's something I personally dig, you know, I will I will want to offer it even if I don't have a license deal, because I don't think everything has to be a big deal. Sometimes you just have to put it out there into the world and you don't know what else can come from it. Right. Just somebody that sees your bag ends up being like a fan of your work. So, yeah, kind of have to be creative. And like we talked about, I, on this journey, have been really strong on going with, like, you, some people might call it your gut, your intuition, um, your instincts. I don't like to pay very close attention to what people in my industry are doing. And I know that people okay. in, in my industry watch each other a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And that was something that it, it really reiterated with me. Like Joanna Gaines said this, she's like, I like to think of it as stay in your own lane, right? People might be alongside you doing whatever they're doing. I have an awareness of what people are doing, but I'm not obsessed with it. And I'm not checking it every other day. I'm so focused in on like what feels good to me, what works for me, what feels authentic to me. And, you know, you might make a, 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 a wrong turn here or there right away correct it like oh we're we're not doing that again um but for the most part i don't follow trends or like what is popular i a lot of times i don't even know i just i'm just doing like oh this might be a good idea let me try this and Mm -hmm. something cool is to look at like lateral industries to what you're interested in so for me i may not look at another artist but i might look at fashion or something else and you might be inspired in that way like instead of like I mean, literally, I you I can't tell you what another artist is like up to unless maybe I follow them and I'm like, hey, you know, I like to encourage people like that's great, that's awesome, that's beautiful, but I don't, I intentionally don't want to know what people are doing like every single day in their lives, right? Like, what are you? What is her next move? Like, I don't care. I'm more concerned. I've, with I myself. find that with me too. I find that with me too. If I, the more I go after what's trending or what's hot, so to speak, it blows up in yeah. my face. Yeah. Cuz I'm yeah, I think no. when you're meant to carve the way, I think yeah. really the 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 world resists you when you're trying to do what yeah. everybody else is doing. And here's the thing in the Caribbean, there's a saying that goes everything ain't for everybody, okay? Um everything ain't for everybody. So just cuz it's popular don't mean it's for you, right? You have to well, kind and, and- of know yourself in Ireland, yeah, they ahead. have a saying, I'm not, um, um, you can be everybody's cup of tea or you could be their shot of whiskey. And the thing is yeah. like, people drink tea every day, right? Well, in Ireland, they drink tea every day. It's a common thing, but it's like you, I mean, yeah. depending on who you talk to, they're probably drinking whiskey too, yeah. but it's like, you might yeah. be, <laughs> you 
are you going to be the tea, which is like the acceptable thing that is, you know, sure. every, in everyone's house and in everybody's cupboard or cupboard, or are sure. you going to be that thing? It's like, are you going to be that shot of whiskey where it's like, I need you when I need you. You know what I mean? It can get the party yeah. started. It could take the edge off. It could do whatever. Like, yes. Yeah. Are you, and sometimes you're not going to be for everybody. Like you, yeah, you're going to be no. that, that once in a while thing and that's okay. Yeah. But you got to be okay Absolutely. with what, but, but if you're not being true to yourself, it's not, it's never going to happen. No, it's never yeah. going to happen. So, so just yeah, really everything, like, everything yeah. ain't for everybody is a hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So I try to, I try to, you know, sort of lean into that. That's a big part of who I am just naturally. I always felt from an early age, like I was more of a leader than a follower. And so I apply that hair in this walk. Like, what do I feel like making? I'm not making what you want me to make. I'm making what I want you to be drawn to what my soul wants me to make. And you're connecting to that on some level, not like, you know, I'm not going to just do like every, okay. You know, birds are really popular right now. You know, okay. I, you know, that's great. Let's just, you know, go outside and look at birds or look at the, look at the artist who's naturally drawn to that, but I'm not going to change what I'm doing because that's trendy at the moment. Um, do you have people telling you to switch it up or do you have people telling you and like, how do you navigate that? Because like, I kind of go through yeah, that a lot because people do have good ideas and you don't want to shit on yes. their ideas. But like, if it's not calling me, I can't do it. Yes. I can't fake it. Right. I, I mean, not so much like they do that, but what I would get is like, they really like this one painting and you should do more of that. Well, yeah, but that was like six months ago and I've moved on. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm, that's the difference to where you, you kind of have to learn, like people feel like they're helping and, mm -hmm. um, I know what's best at the end of the day. So, you know, a lot of times it's not even worth to like really address. I just say, thank you. <laughs> and I keep it moving. Um, the, the true power comes from knowing if you have enough, um, self-confidence to know that was six months ago, I'm not going to somebody's opinion of like, this is great. There's some, one of my mentors taught me this, right? Especially with art, you put out a new product. So in your case, it may be something, some new thing you're, you're doing, right? Yeah, we'll say t-shirts um, or something. Yeah. Your t-shirt. Yeah. You, you, you have to learn not to let your joy, your confidence, anything of that nature be affected by anything new you're putting out. So for me, it could be a new piece of art. And people are like, this is, this is like the best, this is my new favorite of yours. And I, you, if you see my like responses, they're like always happy and thankful. Like, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sweetie, or whatever. But internally, I'm not taking that on as like, yes, I'm having a great day. That's just, I'm just being cordial and, and grateful that you're following my journey. But your opinion, one way or the other, is not going to affect my feeling of my work, right? my work gotcha. and my work. It's not going to, I'm not going to have a bad day because someone's like, this isn't my favorite. Oh, I'm not making it for you. I'm making it for me. And then the residual sort of like, if other people find joy in that, that's an added blessing. But the true blessing is I'm tapped into my own personal joy, what brings me joy. And I'm expressing that. Um, if somebody else like get some residual sort of blessing from that. Thank God. Right. That's a blessing, yeah. but I'm not doing it to please people. I'm not doing it. Like I know these are going to sell. These are my most popular. I'm just going to make yep. these. No, I'm, I'm trying to plug into like, where is my soul taking me? Like, where is my, what, what am I drawn to in this moment? So sometimes I might be flowers in the, in the winter, right? Like mm -hmm. that's not trendy. But I'm like, that's what I feel like making right now. I just really wake up and I'm like, this is, this is what we're doing, right? This is what I want my to husband do. My husband tells me this. He'll be like, don't focus on the product. He's like, focus on the process. He's like, cause the yes. product, the process is so much longer. And he's like, you have to be happy in the process. And yes. a lot of times I do get caught up with the product or the end result. And yeah. I'm even learning what my biggest thing that I've learned on the internet mm -hmm. is that people find you, like you said, they mm -hmm. find you when they find you. Mm -hmm. So you, you're, 
and I'm someone, like you said, I keep it moving because I yeah. am, I am an artist. So I'm right. constantly evolving. I'm, I'm my inspiration. One week may be spirituality. My, my inspiration next year may like when I started this project, my inspiration was food. Mm, it was women and I food. remember. Yes. Then I, because of this path that I went on, I developed and really was called back to my own spirituality oh, wow. and working on that. And then I was healing myself. And then I started documenting my journey of healing myself and getting back to my own feminine power and my self-love and my self-care. Mm-hmm. And now I've moved into, you know, um, and then in the beginning or at one point it was really very New York city centric when we were going um, through the pandemic and like yeah. preserving my city and New York ain't dead. Right. And all the things I was creating was around that. Right. But the problem is, People on the internet may find you during New York Ain't Dead, or they may find you during the food part. And then they're like, wait, why aren't you doing more of this? And it's like, that was three years ago. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And And that's been kind of hard. Yeah, no. Yeah. And really, if there's a common thread there of like, here's Donna, right? And here's what Donna is drawn to, led to, fed by, then there's a common thread that if somebody comes in 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 2004 or 2010, they're still getting, you know what I mean? Like they're still drawn yes. to you and like what what kind of pulls you. Yeah. And that's why you have to maintain authenticity in, in like who you exactly, are. Exactly. Exactly. Are, are we caught up again? Because I think it was lagging. Are we good? I feel you can like hear me I'm okay. Good. Yeah. 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 We're caught up. All right. Cause it was lagging for a minute. Um, no, it's true because like people, as long as you're being authentic and as long as you're staying true to you. And like you said, you're not doing things cause you're like, Oh, I, this is going to sell or this is what they want. And that's yeah. what happens when you start to give people what they want. Right. Because people may find you during the flowers phase, mm-hmm. but if you cater to that, it's not authentic. And then also you're never going to reach all the other people you're supposed to be reaching because you got to continue to stay true to you. Right. But it's uncomfortable because sometimes the audience, they show up for what they want to show up for. Yeah. And they're not about it. Yeah. And so I have like what I call a range (laughs) in my own head. I have a range. And so there are times I do florals. I have like within my portfolio, a range of styles that I create, which, you know, Really, I've heard the advice of like, find your style. And it's usually like one thing and you just get like really good at it. And I I just haven't been able to get to that. I just feel good rotating between these. Like, it's about five. That's how I am. Yeah. You're about I, like four or five different things. Yeah. And I love it because I get bored easily. And so I can move, I can kind of shuffle these things and still keep and be inspired still, you know? When so, is your birthday? I'm curious. It's February 14th. Was so your Pisces? No, Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. I'm sorry, not Aquarius. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, you're close to that friend of mine. You're an Aquarius. Okay, yeah. so yeah, super artist uh, energy, very artist. Yeah. Um, before we, first off, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. Of I course. appreciate you so much, and I, I'm so glad you shared with us. And I want everyone to follow you and and buy art and the things and all the stuff. Um, I have a question for you before we sure. end. If you could go back to that 20 something year old postmaster general, Mm -hmm. um, would you, would you roll with the decisions you've made or do you regret any of it? I don't regret a thing because I, 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 I know now that every hard moment that we went through as a young married couple, um, it was almost like you know, the fertilizer to get me to, to bloom in this way. Um, so I had to get almost like knocked down and like, you know, emerge from that and figure it out. Like you cannot abort the hard time, right? Because that hard time is birthing something beautiful. Like you just have to stick with it and get to the other side, you know, and you don't, for some people, that other side might be, you know, one year, two years. In my case, it was over 10 years. Um, and it was painful. But at the same time, it was beautiful because you have to have perspective in that even though you're waiting for the answer for one thing, in that time, I got to raise my kids. You know, mm-hmm. I still was like nurturing this this young marriage. So I had I was home, right? I see the fruit in mm-hmm. my kids. I see... They're well mannered. I see all the blessings of on the other side. Okay, maybe I didn't have the answer to this, but I had time to put energy into my kids, right? And I and I could see mm-hmm. they're beautiful humans because 
you know, I maybe had more time with them to like nag them over and over and over. Like, no, this is how we do this. So don't say that, you know? Um, so there's a uh -huh. blessing in every hard time. If you're, if you're willing enough to look for it, it's there. Thank you so much. You're and so we can welcome. find you on your website. We can find you on Instagram. Yes. What do you got coming up? Can you, I know you can't talk about, I know you got, I know you're taking meetings, girl. Yes. So what, what can you talk about? What do we have to look forward to? Your crossbody um, bags are coming back. The crossbody bags are coming back. Um, the biggest thing I, I can't say what or like where, but um, my art will be in a major retailer, a different one um, in the fall. So it's going to be like God super, super you. exciting. Yeah, it's going to be probably the biggest thing so far. Yeah, so super exciting. And um, yeah, and I am just creating, you know. How does it feel to be you? <laughs> That's such a funny question. I, You know, I feel finally like found myself you know what I mean like I was on a journey mm -hmm. and I'm like okay I'm not there like I don't think we're ever all like well, I've arrived but it's it's a beautiful thing to sort of like be in my early 40s and like I don't care what anybody says about me it doesn't affect who I is am is it like the isn't the 40s like a little club that they don't yeah, tell you about it's like I feel like it's like a little secret club and I'm like y'all didn't really tell me it was gonna be this great Cause it's like it's a nice. lot of things you used to worry about, or like, oh, what if she thinks this? Or what? If, like, I don't really care, right? Like, I don't care. Um, yeah. What am I doing, right? And so you get you get to share. Well, I need a to know what those... you're doing. I need to know what you're doing skincare, and we need the secrets with that because you are <laughs> glowing. You are funny. Well, I'm I'm well taken. You know what? I have a beautiful marriage, and I think that you know some of that probably just comes from internal joy i have a beautiful relationship yeah. with god and i think really honoring him in that way like for my for my path i knew i was meant to sort of like honor god with my work right and okay. for people who may not walk into a church or like have never heard of god or gee who is this person you're talking about that might be their only access or, or, or like entry point or like, what is she talking about? Or what, you know, I love her art, but I don't get that, but that might be an introduction. Right. Um, right. so ministry can come in like different forms where, you know, God exists in, in, in this form too. He created, he's the greatest creator that ever existed, right? He created everything. So this is his, I'm just a catalyst to sort of express what he wants. That's how I try to, I'm like, God, like just, I, used to pray and say, you know, God, like, I will honor you <laughs> all the days of my life. Um, just show me what I, so I'm like, God, I owe you like all this. So it's like, look, I don't care if you don't want to hear about God, but that's, that's my truth. I, that, that is the truth. You know, God is the reason yeah. why I'm here. He, he answered my prayer after all this time. And I'll tell you one short thing before we go. When I was like a young Christian, I was, we were just newlyweds. It was a Sunday night. We went to church. And um, at this time, you have to remember, this was like postmaster general. I was working at the post office, right? And um, mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of like getting ready to move to New York. And a man after church walked up to me. I don't know him very well. And he said, you are going to have a platform one day to encourage a lot of people. Just like that. You gotta remember, Instagram doesn't really like exist like that. Yeah, you know, this just, is not. Yeah. And I'm like, what is this? What is he talking about? That's all he said, and I had no clue. And now I look back and I think, huh? So I know my part of what I do is to encourage people, whether it's like in art or whatever it is they're pursuing, that there's space for you to do what you want to do. I don't care how many millions of people are doing the same thing. You, your, that's on your yep. heart right? There is space for you to exist and be successful at that thing. If you're authentic and walk in that. And, you know, I went to this, um, I went to this, uh, conference a few years ago, uh, maybe like two years, I don't know, but the, the last two years are like a blur with the mm -hmm. pandemic, but I went to this conference, um, cause you know, I do Reiki and I'm very into like a lot mm -hmm. of these like spiritual modalities of connecting into yourself. And I went to one of these conferences and at the conference, um, they basically were like a lot of you with these tools mm -hmm. that you're like learning are, you know, some of you are going to go on to be like, like you said, be on TV, yeah. be famous, have, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And some of mm -hmm. you are going to be in a small town in Michigan. Mm. 
take your ego out of it yeah. and realize who you're meant to serve and who you're meant to touch and whose lives you're meant to change, yeah. you will align with. Yeah. And as long as like you, like you said, some of us are going to have a million Instagram followers, but maybe you're meant to have that 5,000 and make a difference. And, and you have to understand you're touching who you're, you're yes. getting to who you're supposed to be getting to. Absolutely. The message is, it's not always in popularity. It's not yes. always in a, a ton of likes, but if like at the end of the day, if you're and I, and I 100% get the exchange. Um, I always call it, I made my packs with God. I'm like, I made a pact with God. I got to, you know, I, I yes. sat there and said, I'm going to, yeah. if you help me with this, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll come I'll come back with this. And yeah. even when I was, a couple of months ago, I was um, looking for a new job. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, I prayed on it. And also I have the moon circles and I do all the things. And mm. um, I said, uh, if you give me this new job, I promise you, I will figure out a way to exchange and make people feel better. Mm. And, and I, I made my little pact. And now yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I made a pact. I got to, <laughs> I got to, I got to deliver. Yeah. I got to deliver. I got to yeah. follow through. Cause even yeah. like the other day when I didn't want to do the podcast, I was like, Nope, you said you yes. were going to put this information out there and you were going to help people and you're going to help you. You made your pact. Yeah. So yeah, I got to, yeah. got to deliver. So here I am, but. Aww. Thank you so much. One and more time, where can we find me. you? Tell the people. Tell the people. You the can website, find the Instagram. Me on my website, it's romaoshowo.com. That's R O M A O S O W O.com. You can find me on Instagram at roma.artist. And I'm on Facebook, Roma Oshowo Studio. Thank, Thank you, you so for much having for being me. on this. Yeah. Thank you so I much. You're you. the best. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see. I love you too. And I cannot wait to see what you have up your sleeve next because you just don't yes. stop moving and shaking. Yes.